So I will start with a big overview of the uh, picture as it emerges in the time and place that we are. Okay. Then I will uh, give you an example from our own experiences with the Muria Xana party regarding uh, participative democracy. And finally, I will end up with some questions. And uh, some of the main, if you want, points of compliment with Mr. Jonasson have to do with the following questions. I mean, should we accept democracy just as a value, unquestionably, or should we try to re-justify the value of democracy by showing its effectiveness, even more so at the time where there's quite an issue regarding European democracies. Should we accept participation, again, just for its own sake, or is it, again, the merits of participation that justify it when it comes to having better decisions and much better consensus in the end? And finally, is participative democracy and all the ICT developments that we have just a game that we're playing with right now, or is it a necessity given how things are at the world stage? It's a great pleasure to be here in Strasbourg, in a city which uh, in many ways is a real emblem to the core values of the European Union. And human dignity, freedom, equality, rule of law, respect for human rights, and democracy. Democracy which was invaded in uh, ancient Athens more than two millennia ago. But the big question is, is our democracy functioning adequately right now in Europe? In the 21st century, the EU has reached a very critical stage. Economic globalization is under full deployment, and we have massive countries such as China that are getting increasingly stronger. However, this is a very fortunate development in terms of getting a more, if you want, spherical world and more equal world in many respects, but it has some unfortunate sides to it. And I think the biggest unfortunate side has to do with the fact that such countries have a very strong democratic deficit <laughs> at the moment. And what is even more unfortunate, which comes as a consequence of that, has to do with the fact that exactly this increased authoritarianism and democratic deficit is being thought by some to be an advantage when it comes to being able to keep a stable economic policy, while what we have in Europe might have proven in the short term to be a disadvantage. And indeed, it has proven very difficult for European democracies to sacrifice the short-term political profit for the long-term common good. Thus, towards our survival next to the huge upcoming superpowers, and towards the survival of the core values of Europe, I think that reforming our democracy and strengthening the Union itself is not just a goal, it is an urgent necessity in many respects. And together with the urgent necessity comes an amazing opportunity though. I mean, since ancient times, there has never been a time where all of these new tools through information and communication technologies have been available. The big question is how to use these tools, and we don't have enough experience about how to do that. But the big goal is to be able to demonstrate by, that by incorporating these tools in the right way in the existing democratic process that we have, we are able to reestablish democracy not only as a value, but as the most effective government that can create decisions that are much better than other more authoritarian forms of governance. And exactly this urgent necessity, but also amazing opportunity, is what we have to seize. And there's a lot of developments right now in the academic field when it comes you know, to crowdsourcing, to collective intelligence, to epistemic democracy. But it's very important for us to combine those with massive real-world practice. And let me tell you a story from my own experience. The time is March 2012, and the place is Athens, where once democracy was born. The image is police and angry citizens, there's protests and unrest which are everywhere. And this is the peak of the crisis, which is not only an economic crisis and not only in Greece. I dare to say that this is partially the crisis of the Union itself, of European values and of Western democracy as a whole. Greeks from inside Greece are alarmed, as are Greeks from outside Greece, like me, and as are all Europeans. Within the situation, there's a new party that's arising, and this is the Myria Xana. Its motto was politics without politicians, which is sort of an oxymoron, if you want. And the core values were reform, Eurocentrism, and citizen participation. Of course, there was a lot of enthusiasm, and although there was quite a blockade by the traditional media through a superior communications policy, which combined you know, door to door and cafeterias with you know, the internet and uh, Facebook and Twitter, we were able to actually get everywhere. And the result was hundreds of thousands of votes for a party that was five months old and uh, exceeding the 3% margin in most of the major cities of Greece. 
Now, one year later, after this big boom, it is March of 2013, and we're much more experienced, and for the first time in the political history of Greece, we started experimenting with all the new tools that are available. So the main thing was designing a hybrid electronic and physical collaborative deliberation system, which I will talk about. <coughs> and at the same time, we played quite a lot internally and externally with e-voting and e-polling. For uh, one month before our major congress, we did an online consultation with thousands of people uh, from all over trying to formulate the main positions of the party, given a set of original documents. We had a first phase of distillation, and then we actually had a physical workshop session in which we had tables of five to ten people in big rooms of 200 people or so, working on specific aspects of this text, which are like sort of two questions, if you want. In the end, the tables select representatives, and the uh, rooms themselves uh, do a presentation the next day, and of course, all the second level distilled results become available online. And uh, this was actually uh, quite an amazing uh, outcome for us. Not only the evaluation results were very beautiful, but at the same time, we had the participants getting to know one another, the participants getting to know and getting to contribute to the positions of the party, and we ended up having a very strong follow-up of group action through the people that became originally electronically came together and then physically uh, continued coming together, if you want. So this is uh, our experience or the main part of it. But again, let's take the big picture and let's ask a number of open questions. So out of all the tools that are available now, uh, be it liquid democracy, crowdsourced collaborative policy creation, or various forms of deliberation, referenda, what should we use and when? How should all of these tools be combined and how should they be integrated within existing processes and supplemented to create future and superior democratic processes? What are the pitfalls and dangers and what are the protective and catalytic solutions? We have a small number of answers for a very specific case of our setting. For example, we found out that it's very important to complement the electronic with the physical. So the mixed physical electronic workshops were far superior than anything uh, on its own alone. And we also have seen that although there was a lot of resistance in the beginning towards introducing the idea, even more so in Greece, very, very quickly this was dispelled when uh, people saw the results. But there's a lot of work that remains to be done. And uh, one of the open questions, for example, is how do we solve the enormous privacy and safety issues? Even more so <laughs> at the level where this can even take a transnational, if you want, dimension, having a look at the latest news about the NSA and the access that it has even to uh, European governmental rights. Uh, how can we safeguard our systems against systematic attacks? And most importantly, how can we find ways to make the time to decision of such systems shorter? And this is one of the main problems also of the existing system that the private party is using, that many times the discussions deteriorate and they never really reach consensus. So we need to study these things and we need to find what is the right way to deal with them. And this is a very pragmatic approach. Uh, finally, there's a question of action versus talk. And most importantly, also to answer the comment that we had from uh, the other side of the room, there is a lot of research right now into reputation mechanisms. So if there's a question regarding reliability, the answer can be given again in this research. So it's not only the reputation that somebody has given what others say about him. It's also the fact that we can have a nice record of his actions in the past and of the effectiveness of the decisions and the proposals that he has taken. So it's not just a matter of words, it's a matter also of having a good log of real effectiveness, and this is what should be trying to uh, estimate, if you want. So what I propose is that apart from these sporadic attempts, it's time for us to expand the experimentation, and it's time for us to do it in a more systematic way. Uh, there are many possible settings we could use. One of the reasons why political science was so much advanced in ancient Greece was that we didn't have a monolithic system. We had like different city-states with very, very different systems experimenting for 300 years. And this is how so much knowledge was gained, while, you know, 1,500 years of uh, Egypt didn't bring much difference when it comes to the way of how the state is being run. So uh, just to close, 2,500 years have passed from ancient Athens. We have the European Union as a reality. The world is getting closer, and this is good. But for us to be able to keep our fundamental values, including democracy, and to get them to spread to the world and to really show their utility, it is time to really invest in an effort to use all the tools that are for the first time being available in order to revitalize democracy and create a renaissance of democracy through uh, participation in electronic media.
That's pretty much it. Thank you very much.